Hi, I'm Eliza, and before I dive into my story, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel for more tales like this one. So, let me take you back to the beginning of a journey that turned out to be quite the roller coaster. Coming from a simple background, I've always valued hard work over privilege. My car isn't flashy, and my apartment isn't in the trendiest part of town, but I'm proud of what I've earned on my own. That's what made my relationship with Mark so interesting. Mark came from a world of old money and luxury, quite the opposite of mine. Despite our differences, we found common ground in our dreams and values, and before long, we were deeply in love. The big test came when Mark invited me to meet his parents. I knew how different our worlds were, and the closer the day got, the more my anxieties grew. He tried to reassure me, saying, They're going to love you as I do, Eliza. Just be yourself. The evening was set at their sprawling estate. As we drove through the gates in my old sedan, I couldn't help but feel out of place. The mansion loomed large as we approached, and so did my nerves. Mark squeezed my hand, offering me a comforting smile. It's all going to be fine, he whispered as we parked next to sleek luxury cars that looked nothing like mine. As we walked up to the front door, my heart pounded louder with each step. Mark rang the bell, and there was a short pause before the door swung open. There stood Mrs. Winston, a woman of stature and grace, yet her smile didn't quite reach her eyes as she looked me over. Beside her, Mr. Winston stood tall and imposing, his gaze sharp and assessing. Welcome, Eliza. We've heard so much about you, Mrs. Winston said, her voice polite but cool. As we stepped inside, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was more of an inspection than a warm family introduction. Dinner was served in a grand dining room with a table long enough to seat a dozen people comfortably. The chandeliers cast a soft glow over us, making the silverware gleam and the crystal glasses sparkle. Conversation started off with usual pleasantries, but it wasn't long before the tone shifted. So, Eliza, Mark tells us you're in the editorial business. How quaint, Mr. Winston commented, a slight smirk playing on his lips. Yes, I work for a small publishing house. We might not be big, but we make a significant impact with what we publish, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady despite the patronizing air in his words. And that car of yours outside, it's very... economical, isn't it? Mrs. Winston chimed in, her eyes glinting with unspoken judgments. I smiled, my grip tightening on my fork. Yes, it gets me where I need to go. That's what matters, right? The dinner continued with subtle jabs and probing questions about my background each one a test of my patience and grace under fire. But through it all, I held my head high, determined not to let them see me waver. As we retired to the drawing room for coffee, Mark leaned in close. You're doing great, Eliza. Just a bit longer. We can head home soon. I nodded, fortified by his support, but knowing deep down that this was just the beginning of what would be a long battle for acceptance. But I was ready. After all, resilience was something I had in spades. As we settled into the plush sofas of the drawing room, the weight of the evening's scrutiny pressed heavily upon me. Mrs. Winston gracefully poured the coffee, her movements meticulous and practiced. The air was thick with the scent of rich Arabica beans, a stark contrast to the bitter undercurrents of our conversation. Well, Eliza, it must be a different world, working where you do. Not quite like running a multinational, I suppose, but charming nonetheless, Mr. Winston remarked handing me a fine porcelain cup with a smirk. I took the coffee, my hand steady despite the jab. Every job has its own challenges, Mr. Winston. What's important is how you meet them, not the size of the stage you're playing on. Mark watched us, his expression a mix of pride and concern. He interjected, hoping to steer the conversation to safer waters. Mom, Dad, Eliza is also a fantastic cook. She makes the best. Mrs. Winston cut him off her eyes still fixed on me. That's lovely, dear. But let's stick to more substantial topics. Eliza, I heard your family is from... Where was it again? Quite a humble area, right? Yes, I grew up in a small town. It taught me the value of community and hard work, I replied, feeling the room's temperature seem to drop with each word. Mr. Winston chuckled, setting his cup down with a clink. Hard work is good, but it's not all it takes in life, you know. It's about who you know and the circles you move in that truly matter. Wouldn't you agree? I sipped my coffee, buying a moment to gather my thoughts. I believe in making my own circles, Mr. Winston. Building something lasting from the ground up. The conversation was interrupted by the ring of a phone. 
Mrs. Winston excused herself, leaving Mr. Winston, Mark, and me in an uncomfortable silence. Mark squeezed my hand under the table, his way of saying he was sorry for the evening's turn. When Mrs. Winston returned, her face was pale, her usual composure slipped slightly. That was an important call. It seems there's been a significant shift in one of our investments. Excuse me, I need to handle this. As she left the room hurriedly, Mr. Winston followed, casting a wary glance back at us. Mark let out a long sigh. They can be a bit much, I know, Mark whispered, his voice filled with apology. But don't let it get to you. They just come from a different time, a different way of thinking. I nodded, though the sting of their words lingered. It's not just about coming from different times, Mark. It's about respect. And tonight, I felt like there was none for me here. Mark looked torn, the conflict clear in his eyes. I'll talk to them, Eliza. They need to understand who you are, how amazing you are. Give it time. We sat together, the sounds of the night filtering through the grand windows, and I wondered just how much time it would take for Mark to see that maybe, just maybe, it wasn't about giving it time, but about standing up for what's right. Now. The next day brought no respite from the tension. Over breakfast, the sun streamed through the expansive windows of the Winston residence, casting patterns on the polished silverware. The mood, however, was anything but bright. Mr. Winston began almost immediately, his tone more direct than the night before. You know, Eliza, we've been thinking about your relationship with Mark. We feel there are certain realities you might not have considered. I paused, a piece of toast midway to my mouth. Realities such as? Mrs. Winston joined in, her voice laced with a feigned concern that didn't quite mask her underlying motive. Well, it's just that your backgrounds are so different. We worry that integrating into our family might prove challenging for you. I set my toast down, my appetite gone. I appreciate your concern, but Mark and I love each other. Isn't that the most important thing? Mark, sitting between us, looked from me to his parents, clearly uncomfortable. Mom, Dad, Eliza makes me happy. Isn't our happiness what should matter the most? Mr. Winston leaned back, his gaze sharp. Happiness is fleeting, Mark. What's enduring are the connections and the status that come with our family name. These are things that Eliza, with all due respect, doesn't bring. Feeling the sting of his words, I fought to keep my voice even. I bring myself, Mr. Winston, and I believe I am enough. I don't need a prestigious name to define my worth. The air thickened with unspoken tensions, and Mrs. Winston sighed dramatically. Oh, Eliza, it's not about worth. It's about compatibility. Our world is very complex, filled with responsibilities and expectations you might find overwhelming. Mark finally spoke up, his tone firm. I chose Eliza because she is strong, independent, and yes, compatible with me, and whatever future we decide to build. Not the one you have scripted for us. Mr. Winston frowned clearly not used to being contradicted. We are only thinking of what's best for the family, Mark. You'll see that in time. As the conversation spiraled, I felt a mix of anger and determination swelling within me. I think what's best for Mark is for him to be allowed to make his own decisions. Who he marries should be his choice, not a strategic alignment. Mrs. Winston pursed her lips, the facade of politeness crumbling. This isn't just about you two. It's about maintaining a legacy that has been built over generations. I looked at Mark, his expression a mix of frustration and resolve. This legacy, I said, turning back to his parents, shouldn't be a cage. It should be a foundation to build on, not just to maintain. Mark reached for my hand under the table, squeezing it tightly. Exactly, Eliza. If my parents can't see that, then maybe we need to think about how we move forward, with or without their approval. The meal ended with a heavy silence the kind that lingers long after the plates have been cleared. As Mark and I left the dining room, I couldn't help but feel a shift between us, a mutual recognition of the battle ahead, not just with his parents, but for the future we envisioned together. As Mark and I retreated to the garden for some fresh air, my phone vibrated in my pocket. It was Grandma June, always impeccable with her timing. Her voice, when I answered, was calm, but laced with concern. How's the visit going, sweetheart? I sighed, watching a pair of butterflies dance above the flower bed. It's tough, Grandma. They're not making it easy. Grandma June was silent for a moment. I thought as much, 
Hold on a moment, dear. What I didn't know was that Grandma June had already taken matters into her own hands. She had a way of making her displeasure known, especially when it came to protecting her family. Later that day, as Mark and I were preparing to leave, Mr. Winston received a phone call that visibly shook him. He stepped away, his voice low but strained. Mrs. Winston looked on, bewildered. Then her phone rang too. The color drained from her face as she listened. After hanging up, Mrs. Winston approached us, her usual poise replaced by a rare form of desperation. That was a call from our chief investor, June. Your grandmother, Eliza? They've decided to pull out of our major development project. I nodded, understanding now what Grandma June had done. She was no ordinary retiree. She was a seasoned businesswoman who had built her wealth with a sharp mind and iron will. Her influence in the financial world was not something to be underestimated. Mark looked from his mother to me, confusion turning to realization. You talked to her, didn't you? I hadn't. But Grandma June had seen enough from a distance. She doesn't take kindly to anyone mistreating her family, I explained. Mrs. Winston turned to her husband, who had just rejoined us, his expression grim. This could jeopardize everything we've been working on, she whispered to him. Mr. Winston regarded me with a new sense of wariness. Your grandmother is June Blackwell? The investor June Blackwell? Yes, I confirmed, my voice steady. She believes in fairness and respect, qualities she wasn't sure you held, given your approach towards me. Mark stepped closer, taking my hand. Maybe this will make you reconsider how you've treated Eliza. She's not just someone you can dismiss or underestimate. The weight of the situation settled over Mr. and Mrs. Winston as they exchanged looks, the implications of their actions now fully realized. Grandma June had not just pulled an investment. She had sent a clear message. Her family was her priority, and she would protect it at all costs. This wasn't just a financial blow. It was a wake-up call that respect and kindness were not optional, even in the face of old money and established power. As we left the estate, the air felt lighter, and Mark squeezed my hand. Thank you, Eliza, and thank Grandma June. I think my parents needed that shock to see things clearly. Driving away, I felt a mix of triumph and relief. Grandma June's intervention had changed the game. It was a reminder that sometimes, the greatest strength came from standing firm and letting your actions speak louder than words. The drive back from the Winston estate was filled with a reflective silence, a stark contrast to the tumultuous departure. Mark finally broke the quiet, his voice thoughtful. I never expected any of this to happen, but I'm glad it did, in a way. I nodded, watching the landscape blur past. It needed to happen. We needed to stand our ground. In the days that followed, the impact of Grandma June's decisive action became apparent. Mr. and Mrs. Winston's initial shock gave way to a reluctant introspection. Their calls to us were more subdued, a mixture of apology and an attempt to understand our perspective. They expressed a desire to start anew, to build a relationship based on genuine respect, rather than preconceived notions of worth and status. During one particularly candid conversation, Mrs. Winston admitted, We were wrong, Eliza. We let our fears and biases dictate our behavior. We hope it's not too late to change that. This acknowledgement was a small victory, a sign that even the most rigid views could be altered in the face of undeniable truth. For me, the ordeal had been a crucible, testing and ultimately fortifying my sense of self-worth. Reflecting on everything that had happened, I realized how vital it was to be surrounded by people who valued me for who I was not what I could bring to the table in terms of wealth or status. Mark had proven his loyalty and love, standing by me when it would have been easier to side with his parents. Our bond had been tested, but it emerged stronger, more resilient. Sitting in our living room one evening, I shared my thoughts with Mark. This whole experience, it's taught me a lot about myself, about us. I've never been more sure of anything. Mark smiled, taking my hand. Me neither. We're in this together, no matter what. My parents are starting to see that now. As we planned our future, free from the shadows of judgment and expectation, I felt a profound sense of peace. The toxic influence that had once loomed so large was now just a memory, a reminder of what we had overcome. Our relationship had not just survived, it had thrived under pressure, becoming a testament to the power of love and respect over tradition and expectation. Grandma June's bold move was not just about protecting her granddaughter, 
It was about setting a precedent for what was truly valuable in our lives. Looking ahead, I knew that challenges would come. But with Mark by my side and a newfound understanding of my worth, I was ready for them. We were building a future not just on love, but on mutual respect and shared values, knowing that together, we were unstoppable. That brings us to the end of our story, where Eliza and Mark navigate through the challenges of familial expectations and personal worth. Now I have a question for you all. Do you think it's important for family approval in a relationship, or should couples prioritize their happiness over family expectations? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and the journey we took together, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more engaging tales. Your support helps us bring more stories like this to life. Let's continue the conversation and explore these complex dynamics together.